We've got some notable updates to catch up on since we last talked about Sonic last year. Now, first off, Sonic's mainnet has been live since December, so now we're finally able to see how it performs in practice and whether it's living up to the hype. There have also been some notable developments on the tech side, across the ecosystem, and its upcoming airdrop. So let's start with the tech. You've probably seen some of the buzz around Sonic Speed. In our video last year when Sonic hadn't launched yet, it was being advertised as handling around 10,000 transactions per second. According to co-founder Andre Kanye, that figure was based on complex smart contract interactions, which is how most real activity happens on layer one blockchains like Sonic. Now though, you'll notice Sonic is being promoted as capable of reaching up to 400,000 transactions per Per second. But that number refers to the theoretical maximum, not something that you would see in normal usage. Plus, it's based on raw token transfers without smart contracts involved. In practice, the highest recorded throughput so far on Sonic is around 1500 TPS. For comparison, Solana has exceeded 10,000 TPS, Aptos has gone over 22,000, and EVM-based chains like Arbitrum and BNB Chain have hit over 5,000 and 2,000 respectively. That said, Sonic does stand out in finality. It often finalizes transactions in under a second, which is faster than most other blockchains according to Chainspect. To improve overall performance, Sonic is planning an upgrade to its consensus protocol, moving from Sonic CS 1.0 to Sonic CS 2.0. Now, without getting too technical, Sonic uses a graph-based system known as the Directed Acyclic Graph, or DAG, to keep track of the order of transactions across the network. Then it runs an election to decide which of these transactions should be used to build the next block, which is eventually added to the blockchain. In Sonic CS 1.0, these elections happen one at a time and votes are processed individually. According to Sonic, this limits how quickly blocks can be finalized. So Sonic CS 2.0 introduces two main changes. First, elections can now run in parallel. Instead of waiting for one to finish before starting the next, the system can handle multiple at once. Sonic says this will help reduce delays between blocks. And second, vote processing has been redesigned. Instead of counting each vote on its own, the system now uses a matrix-based approach that allows batch processing. Sonic reports this cuts down both the time and memory needed to reach consensus. And in testing, Sonic says version two was about twice as fast and used 68% less memory than the current version. So the upgrade is expected to go live sometime this year. Alongside the upcoming consensus upgrade, another major change on Sonic is fee monetization or fee M. So this was introduced in March and it changes how transaction fees are distributed across the network. If a user interacts with an app that's part of the FEEM program, up to 90% of the transaction fee goes directly to the app's developer and the remaining 10% goes to validators. If the app isn't enrolled in FEEM, the fee is split differently. 50% is burned. 45% goes to validators and 5% goes to the ecosystem vault. Now, Sonic highlights that this model allows developers to earn directly from the usage of their apps without needing to launch a token or raise external funding. So since launch, the program has generated over 500,000 S tokens and fees spread across more than 90 dApps that are currently live in the program. Now, speaking of apps, Sonic has seen fast growth in DeFi since launching its mainnet and has surpassed 1 billion in total value locked. A big part of that comes from its partnership with DeFi protocols like Aave and Silo Finance, both of which have deployed on the chain and now account for close to half of Sonic's TVL. Sonic has also notably partnered with Circle, the issuer of USDC. Right now, there's $600 million of stable coins on Sonic and bridged USDC from Ethereum makes up over 
80% of that. With the partnership, Circle will start issuing native USDC on Sonic soon. In the background of all of this is an upcoming airdrop, which is likely playing a big role in driving user activity. And Sonic announced the program last year, allocating around 200 million S tokens. The first season is already live and will run until June. Now, while we're on the topic of tokens, Sonic has updated its token migration process. Previously, you could move between FTM and S tokens, but as of April, the migration is now one way only from FTM to S. Outside of DeFi, Sonic has been working on launching its crypto card. Back in December, Sonic announced a virtual card in partnership with Redot Pay that will let users spend USDC on the Sonic network for everyday purchases. The card became available to users in March and there's also a physical card in the works. According to Sonic, it'll support ATM withdrawals and work at places that don't accept virtual cards. So, What's next for Sonic? Well, according to co-founder Andre, the focus for the near future is to make it easier for people to try apps and to make sure that developers can earn from the usage that they bring in. To do that, several features are on the roadmap. One is fee subsidies, which would let apps cover gas fees for users. So people could try apps without needing to hold tokens up front. Another is dynamic fees, where apps can set their own fee structure structure instead of relying on a fixed gas model. And then there is native account abstraction, which aims to remove barriers like wallet setup or gas payments. So those are some of the biggest updates since Sonic's launch. Now, the big question is, Will it be enough for Sonic to sustain its growth and surpass its predecessor, Phantom? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Bye.